Hi guys, in this video I would like to talk to you specifically about the UI, how we can create our own UI and how we can work with Escoria's existing UI systems. In a previous video I have showed you how to resize your game to the proper resolution, but we never talked about the UI, so that's also a topic we're going to uh, work with. Uh, so let's start with opening the demo game. So if you've seen uh, previous videos, you remember that uh, the best starting point is not to use the assets library, it's to use the demo game because it's the one that's always the most up-to-date. And if you look at the demo game, at the plugins there, you will see that you have several UI plugins offered to you and you need to tick the one that you want to use. Uh, in this case, I was using Escoria Simple Mouse UI and it was enabled. So in this first tutorial, let's show you how to create your own. So as you know, the plugins are stored in the add-ons folder and the sim simple mouse one uh, is this one. So what we want to do first is to duplicate this folder. And let me clarify why I want to start with an existing UI. It's because uh, if you have tried making your own UI for Escoria, for your Escoria game, you might have struggled with the positioning of the controls and struggling with the resolution, like the, the default buttons are too big or too small or not properly positioned. And so you might be tempted to get rid of it and start from scratch. But also you don't want to lose the benefit of having all the actions wired on the buttons. For example, when you click on New Game, when you click on Save, when you uh, open the inventory. The inventory is particularly tricky, so you don't want to lose that. So you're stuck in the middle with this dilemma. Should I reuse an existing one? Should I not? Well, just for exhaustivity's sake, I will show you how to uh, create, how to duplicate an existing one and make it your own. So I'm very simply going to copy the folder corresponding to the one that I want to duplicate. So for example, if I wanted to use nine verbs, I will use this folder, but I want to use simple mouse, so I'm going to use this folder, and I just copy paste. And then I will give it a special name, for example, Tuto for Tutorial. Okay, so now I have this very simple folder, and I might uh, want to refresh there. Uh, I don't remember how to do it in Godot because I hate this interface. There is no refresh button. Where is the fucking refresh button? It's automated, okay, but with a delay. You know, a regular uh, Godot hate stuff. But whatever. So it's there, but we're not done. Now, we want to replace all the places where this name was appearing because it might be uh, it might be appearing in a path in the resources uh, like a folder name. It might be appearing as a variable in some places. So we need to replace it. Uh, I'm going to open this folder with Visual Studio Code because. It's the it's it's very good for full text replacement. So that's what I do. I open Visual Studio Code. I open the new folder I created. And now I see it there, and I'm going to do a full text search and replace. So Control Shift F, and as you can see, you can search, but you can also replace. So. Let's start by looking for the existing names. So it was Escoria dash UI dash simple mouse. And as you can see, it appears in a lot of places. So let's replace with my own. And let's have a quick check to see if we are going to break something. So, for example, those are paths to resources. And that's perfect, because now they are in this folder in the resource uh, tree. So if I had not replaced that, it would be using the resources from that other one. That would be weird. My plugin would be using the default resources. So I totally want to replace that. Uh, the name of the plugin. Yes, I want to give it my own name so that it appears under its own name in the plugins list. Uh, registering, okay, uh, so I want to make sure that everything is consistent and from the look of it I can just bulk replace everything 
Ooh, look, there is a problem here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's doing that now, because I did not have this issue before. Uh, it has... already replaced the name of the folder in some places hmm. okay then it means that Godot is too smart or too dumb for its own good so I'm gonna start again but this time I am not going to have Godot open so that it does not mess with the files. Okay, and now it has deleted the folder. Okay, truly... Okay, so let's do it again. Copy-paste. Rename Visual Studio Open Folder and then Full sec full full text search. So do I still have those issues there? No. Now the names are correct, so that's great. So just for safety I'm gonna continue have a quick quick look to see if one of the values is out of the ordinary. Hmm. That's, fu that's funny, that's uh, the creator of the plugin. They had uh, probably their... They did it from their computer and there is the path to their work folder. Uh, so that simply means probably we won't be able to reload some of them some of the resources but it does not matter matter we're not going to try to reload any of them we just work as is okay so everything seems fine so now i'm just going to act on what i said i'm going to do the full text replace all let's go okay so now i can see that the files have my new name so now I'm going to close Visual Studio Code and I'm going to reopen Godot I'm going to wait for the resources to load And I see that my folder is here, and normally all everything that's in it belongs to it, and there should not be any collision with the other one. However, I want to now enable it as the UI. And I have a problem here, is that the new one, has the, the old one, has the same display name. So, no problem. I'm going to close Godot again. I'm going to reopen Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code, sorry. And I'm going to look for that string, for that display name. So shift Control f again. And now I'm going to look for that text I saw. So I can see that it appears in two places. There is like the short name and there is a little description. And I see that it appears here, it doesn't, it's just a comment, but it doesn't cost much to update it. Okay, now what happens if I reopen Godot?
there you go I have my own name here so you what you want to do is disable the one that was used until this very moment and instead enable your UI system and then when you run the game make sure that everything works as expected so in my case I have resized the game so it looks a bit weird but just check check that uh, as you can see the UI works if you click on the menu if you click on new game everything you have not broken anything I can iterate through the icons with the right click so perfect I call this a success now one last comment about how to maintain your code by the way I'm going to delete this because the demo is over So one last, one last command on how to update this code because if you are uh, if you want to brute force it, you are very free to do exactly what I did, which is copy paste the folder and then try to tear it down and modify it as much as you want. But maybe you will realize at some point that there will be an update in the original plugin that you copy and paste it. Maybe it's gonna fix a bug that you never thought it even existed or that you would not know how to fix yourself. And then you would be you would have a problem because you would not know how to apply those fixes to your own modifications. And that's why usually uh, pros use Git or versioning in general. And if you feel confident enough with Git, my recommendation would be uh, the following: you have when you when you got the game from Git, you have the main branch. And you might have um, forked the repo for your own game. And so you still have the main branch in your own fork of the repo. And then you might decide maybe, I don't know, maybe you have your extra cautious and you have a branch for your own game because from time to time you want to uh, refresh this and then either rebase or merge into your own game so that you can benefit from the latest um, updates in the Escoria plugin. But maybe in this case for the UI it's not enough. Maybe you want to create another branch that contains only your UI. And from time to time what you want to do so every time you work here you, you commit your changes and from time to time what you want to do maybe is to remerge or even better rebase main from the fork from the original repo into this branch for just for the UI just for the UI you don't do any other change for your game those are there you update the UI and if you do a rebase, it's great for checking the, for avoiding mixing your changes and the changes to the branch because rebase acts as if all your changes came after the modifications to the to the main repository to the main branch. So this way you can see any new stuff coming from main, and then you reapply reapply your own changes with a rebase, and then when you're happy with your UI you re-merge it into your game from time to time. And that's how you keep the changes to the UI separated from the changes to your game. That's you, how you don't get mixed up and that's how you benefit from the updates to that UI system that might come from the main repo. Okay, I hope that was clear. Uh, good luck with your UI. See you in the next episode where we're going to talk about resolution and positioning of the graphical elements. Talk to you later.